According to Treasury's website, over 5 million recipients have enrolled in the Direct Express program, which is used by the federal and state governments to disperse supplemental security income and Social Security benefits to those enrolled. Uh, according to the U.S. Treasury, it costs a dollar and three cents to issue a paper check, only 10.5 cents to be able to use the electronic payments like Direct Express. Yeah. Uh, yet the CFPB has proposed a prepaid account rule that would fundamentally change how uh, government cards, including the statement at the top, uh, to require disclosure to all recipients uh, that the recipient does not have to accept a government benefit card. And uh, I guess my question is, uh, this has been popular, uh, seems to have worked. Does this new policy, uh, is this going to create uh, some disharmony and actually disincentivize people from being in the program? So, so I have the same reaction you do. I think that uh, the fact that government programs at the federal, state, and local level, county, city, have moved toward benefits on cards as opposed to issuing paper checks is beneficial to consumers in many ways. I don't think our prepaid card rule is affecting those government programs, but if it is, I'd be glad to have our folks follow up with your staff and make sure that we can give you assurances in that regard. And if it is a problem, then we, we still have that rulemaking pending. We could take account of that as we finalize it. So Good, I'd appreciate happy that. to have I that think, discussion. Yeah, 95 percent approval rating with those government cards. Yeah. Yeah. Going out. And it's more secure, better for the consumers. They don't have to deal with cash or check cashing and other things. So I agree right. with that. Yeah, and uh, Director, uh, the proposed rule for prepaid accounts has raised uh, some serious concerns over the treatment of credit features for prepaid products. Uh, consumers are using these products, uh, obviously, to be able to meet their ev everyday needs. Uh, in my own district in Colorado, we have uh, Dolores from Pueblo who wrote, that uh, the prepaid card help her put food on the table for her family or to be able to pay a utility bill. And I'm concerned that the uh, lack of understanding of how this product is used uh, by folks back at home will lead to its elimination. And what's the CFPB's plans to be able to make sure the consumers or like Doris in Pueblo continue to have access to overdraft protection? So in terms of prepaid cards, the rulemaking that we have underway and it's still pending, so it's not final, uh, is intended to create consumer protections for those cards that have never existed. I think people reach into their wallet and they get out a debit card or a prepaid card or a credit card, they assume they have the same protections. They don't. Prepaid cards have nothing. If you have errors, you can't get them corrected. If you have disputes, you can't get them resolved. You have no rights in that regard. So that's been the, the focus of our rulemaking. In terms of overdraft on the prepaid cards, what we proposed in our initial proposal that we're still working through and thinking about was that those cards should be treated similar to credit cards in terms of uh, whether they are credit or not, uh, if they involve overdraft. And that, that was the proposal. We've gotten a lot of comment on that both ways, uh, and we're working through that. Okay, and uh, just making sure that that is available, I, I hope that you are taking into consideration that uh, the concern this creates in terms of the industry is almost unanimously noted that uh, they'll stop offering overdraft features some of the By the way, associates. very few in the industry offer overdraft now. Almost unanimously, they do not offer overdraft. So, I mean, it's a, it's a very small portion of the industry that this would affect. But the proposal, at least, was to offer such people with credit card-like protections, like in the CARD Act. Uh, you know, we've seen both criticism and endorsement of that, and we'll have to size that up. And, and okay. Well, uh, uh, Director, I'd like to go back a little bit to the conversation that you're having with uh, Mr. Rothfuss and yeah. uh, Mr. Schweikert in regards to some of the data uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, coming out. Uh, the government has uh, suffered, obviously, some very embarrassing security and privacy breaches recently and lost sensitive data for millions of federal employees. And CFPB is about to issue new Home Mortgage Disclosure Act rule, which will require lenders to be able to submit uh, detailed private information on their customers. Uh, with that in mind, can you specify what steps that the Bureau is taking uh, to be able to protect homeowners from data breaches? Yes. Uh, that information for our National Mortgage Database, if that's what you're referring to, uh, will be de-identified and anonymized before it comes to the Bureau. Uh, and that's exactly how we're trying to handle it. And therefore, I think it's of little interest to hackers because they would have to, as, as uh, Congressman was mentioning earlier, they have to go through an arduous re-identification process if they even could do it as opposed to other databases that companies have where if they can hack into those, they can get right into personal information and, and the like. That's how we're trying to handle that. It's been uh, looked at by the GAO and the Inspector General. Uh, I think it's the, a responsible approach. If people have further suggestions on it, I'm glad to hear them. Yeah, the uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce put out a statement that uh, the Bureau is putting consumer personal information at risk by collecting enormous volumes of identifiable information
Commission, yet failing to be transparent or install confidence to, as recognize and address the cybersecurity risk posed by such a vast amount of data. Yeah, I don't think that's really accurate to the details of what we're doing. I understand the statement for rhetorical purposes. And I'm glad to talk to the chamber about it. They have not raised time, anything with us recently. The time of the gentleman has expired. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Williams. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman.